Hi, this is Joanne, and back in 2003 or 2004, I read a book that has quickly become one of the most popular uh, science books ever written for the general public. And this book is Krakatoa, The Day the World Exploded, August 27th, 1883, by Simon Winchester. Now, I read a book, this book way back when, but I decided to revisit it on audio because I recall it was really such a wonderful book and it's just an amazing standout book as an example of what a really good science writer can do um, with information. And uh, so, of course, this book discusses uh, the, the explosion of the volcano Krakatoa in Indonesia. Um, but he starts the book by uh, discussing what was happening at the time in Indonesia, in Java, with um, the Dutch East Indies Trading Company and how the Dutch had colonized the islands for, of course, their gain, for their benefit. Um, but then he moved slowly into the discussion of the biological discoveries that were being made at the time. Alfred Russell Wallace, of course, was in the area cataloging the various flora and fauna. Um, Alfred Rus Russell Wallace is famous for two things. One is his epiphany he had with respect to uh, evolution that he shared with Charles Darwin, whom he admired greatly. And, um, of course, uh, Charles Darwin had been grappling with the, the idea of evolution, but he couldn't quite get the last piece. And it was what Alfred Russell Wallace shared with him that, that added the final piece. And Darwin was actually uh, quite able to capitalize on this and really has claimed most of the fame, more or less, for the idea of evolution, or it has been bestowed upon him in that way. Um, but the other thing uh, Alfred Russell Wallace discovered was that um, between Indonesia and Australia, there was an abrupt change in the flora and fauna. And uh, so what came about was this artificial line that he drew that now bears his name called the Wallace Line um, that represents something unusual going on in that area with respect to the flora and fauna. Now, what could that possibly have to do with a volcano exploding? Well, what it seems to represent, this abrupt shift in speciation, represents this um, potential um, rearrangement of the Earth's surface that's um, been under consideration since the time of Alfred Wegener and this uh, concept of continental drift uh, caused by the convection of the mantle of the Earth and the crust moving along. So, of course, you know, there was that whole Pangaea and it split apart. And so um, Simon Winchester did a beautiful job describing um, this process. And then he goes on to discuss how geologists discovered that hmm, continental drift could very well be true. And uh, and then further in the book, he does discuss uh, the theory of plate tectonics, which is what causes the um, earthquakes and volcanoes that we are aware of, and you know the formation of new land masses. So after this d discussion of geology and uh, some of the things geologists do, uh, Simon Winchester goes back to discussing the events that occurred around the explosion of Krakatoa. And of course, he gets into an amazing amount of detail. He discusses, you know, all the various things that happens with the volcano, uh, the various different um, rocks and uh, flows that different volcanoes occur, you know, have. Not just what Krakatoa could produce, but all sorts of volcanoes. So he leaves no stone unturned, pumice or otherwise, I suppose. Um, and he then discusses uh, the aftermath, the tidal waves all the various things that how do people deal with this you know lives lost um, property damage and going on and on but then he goes further to discuss the the state of telecommunications at the time where then this information was spread across the world and in fact how actually people heard this explosion uh, quite some distance away and actually how barometric pressure changes were noticed uh, halfway across the world um, and that pressure shifts can uh, travel through the atmosphere incredibly uh, well. Um, and so the, then Simon Winchester was able to launch into a discussion of meteorology and the shifts in temperature and the shifts in barometric pressure and everything that occurred thanks to the explosion of Krakatoa. And he, um, of course, then, you know, if you think he could not possibly do more, he starts talking about the artwork 
that came out of the time after Krakatoa because what happened was the dust had uh, settled into the atmosphere in such a way that for several months afterwards there were these amazing incredible sunsets that were seen and inspiring people uh, for uh, many months afterwards. Um, and one of the funniest things I learned from this book was that Gerard Manley Hopkins, the Jesuit priest who is also a poet, um, made a contribution to the journal Nature, which could maybe be a little dry. You wouldn't think you'd have poetry in there. But um, what Hopkins did was to write a description of sunsets <laughs> that, that came after that time. And it was, a, it was a beautiful Gerard Manley Hopkins description, not a very nature um, description, but I really enjoyed that little bit of information. Um, so, uh, past the artwork, past the writings that came out of the time after Krakatoa, we also learn about other volcanoes, how other volcanoes form, how the explosion of other volcanoes have affected uh, the planet as well. But then ultimately, well, the book wraps up with two more points, and one is about the uh, resurgence of an Islamic movement in the area after the explosion of Krakatoa, which may or may not be directly related to uh, the explosion. Um, there, he was theorizing, maybe it did, but the the rise of an Islamic um, militancy that allowed the Javanese to essentially um, shift the power in the area um, against the Dutch. And uh, so it was a very interesting political and social um, treaties there um, with respect to uh, the, the explosion of a volcano affecting a population. And then finally the book ends with a discussion of how volcano, this volcanic island really had been completely obliterated, but then how it uh, came back to life thanks to the geological movements, the uh, intense activity uh, in, the, in that area thanks to subduction of plates. Um, but then also then the subsequent uh, biological succession uh, and repopulating of the island with uh, flora and fauna. So uh, almost everything you ever cover in uh, high school um, science is covered in this book. This book is marvelous, it's fantastic, and seriously, if you have not read a single science book ever, this is a great one to pick up. It's an easy read. It's just, it's so richly detailed. You would think he could not put another bit of information in without making the book dull and heavy, but no, it's just it's a wonderful story. So I'm highly recommending Krakatoa by Simon Winchester. Go ahead and pick it up. Uh, very popular, very amazing book. Deserves all the awards it's gotten. All right, thanks.